Hello, everyone. Doug Thompson here from Bottom Line University and the Impact Initiative Program. I just want to go ahead and talk to you a little bit today about the power of doing a listing presentation and what happens when somebody comes up with a seduction, such as they want to actually buy a home before they sell yours. Never heard of that before, right? No, just a few times. So uh, if you knew how to handle that, I know that you'd be feeling much more comfortable and confident in the sale of getting more listings and selling more homes. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about that and demonstrate how to actually handle that when the situation arises. As usual, we're in the middle of our presentation. So here we are. So we're going to get started, right? At the beginning of the presentation is if we slide all the way through until that situation comes up or that seduction comes up. Fair enough. So let's look at here we are at the beginning and we're going to start moving forward. So our first slide, of course, is our introduction slide. Our second is going through all the process, the five step process that we would normally go through. We would, of course, start to address our concerns or understand your concerns. And then the next page, of course, comes to that magical page. And we're going to ask our first or second, actually, major closing question. And so what would that be? What would it take to get your home listed with me today? Right then and there is when you might get the situation where somebody brings it up and says, well, I'm not going to do that because what I want to do is I want to go ahead and buy a house before I sell mine so I don't end up living on the street because I'm a little nervous. It's a bit of a hot market right now. And that could happen, right? And you're not going to say, yes, it could, because of course, you're going to make sure that it doesn't. But how are you going to do that, though, gang? First of all, what you want to do is you want to realize that if somebody wants to uh, buy a house first and then sell theirs, it is going to cost them a small fortune. And we're about to demonstrate to them how that's going to happen. But when you've asked the question, and now it's time for you to get ready to move forward, so we say... What would it take to get your home on the market today? And they say that they're thinking that they'd like to buy before they sell. You say, okay, no problem. Let me ask you this. Would you mind if we set that aside for a minute so the action could go ahead and finish the presentation? And then we'll talk about that a little bit later. Fair enough. Okay, great. That's called the set it aside technique, gang. You set, took the seduction and you set it aside so that we can move forward and actually handle it as we go. Fair enough. Okay, great. So let's continue on. So now we're going to continue where we go to the next step, of course, analyze the property. We're going to go through, of course, the uh, three points in our customized marketing plan. We're going to talk about the company and we're going to go through all the different points that are within our company. We're going to talk about our marketing plan and all the five points that we have in our presentation to talk about our company, of course. Then we're going to go to, of course, me and why are the five things that you personally have put in here that are about you that you normally would be demonstrating in a normal presentation, which we've done in the past for you in another video. And now you're going to come to the magical question. And the magical question is when you're going to close again, because you've showed them so much value. Now you're going to deliver this question. If you're OK with my company, my marketing plan and me and assuming we could agree on a price, would you list your home with me today? And at this point, they're going to smile and they're going to say, geez, you did a nice job. I really got a lot of good information about what you're going to do and how it's going to happen. But I still think I'd rather, you know, buy a house first. I'm a little nervous. And you're going to say, OK, now let me ask you this. If I could show you beyond a shadow of a doubt that it could cost you a small fortune, and I mean thousands of dollars, would you consider to not do it what you're thinking, do it the way you're thinking, to do it maybe the other way around? I'm not necessarily saying you're doing it wrong, but uh, you might be doing it in reverse. Fair enough. Would you consider it? You might. Okay, great. Have you ever heard of the buy sell analysis? No. What's that? Well, let's go up here to the hot buttons and we'll drop down to the buy sell analysis and we'll demonstrate what it is. What it is, is it's an overview of the amount of money that you could lose if you go ahead and try to buy a home first before you sell yours. So let's go ahead and have a look at it. So as you can see here, you're looking that you're going to buy a new home. So when you're going to buy that new home and you're going to go ahead in today's market, even though it's not a fire hot market, uh, this is when this works, gang, obviously, when it's not a fire hot, fire hot market and you can go ahead and have some time to be able to have conditions on your offer, meaning hypothetically, you're thinking you're going to put subject to the sale of on your home, be able to buy one. When you do that, any good, strong listing agent is going to say to you, well, thank you very much for the offer. I really appreciate it, but they're not going to be very excited about that offer. Why? Because subject to the sale of really is not that good. How come? Because it takes the home off of the market. 
the existing home that they're negotiating on, if the seller accepts that, it literally takes the home off the market. And what does that mean? That means that there is a time then that the people that are actively looking to buy a home won't look at your home because this, they can't necessarily guarantee buy it. If you have a serious corporate buyer that's coming in, of course, that's the type that you're looking for, somebody that has to buy in the next 30 or 60 days, they don't have time to wait for 72-hour clause or 24-hour clause or 48-hour clause. They don't have time to wait for that to see if they're going to get the house. So they just pass and move on to another home. And that's a bit of a negative. Good example of what we're talking about is this. Go ahead and have a 72-hour clause on the seller's house. And then have a buyer go look at that house, say, okay, I like it and I want to buy it. And then just before they're going to get the 72 hours out, the first person takes off the condition and they lose out. The analogy I always used to think about in this is like hand a five-year-old or a three-year-old an ice cream cone, let them have a couple of licks and then take it away from them and see how it works. Doesn't go that good, gang, right? And that's exactly what happens. And that's why a lot of the top producing agents avoid showing any home that has a 72-hour clause on it or so on. So keep that in mind. So, but also, though, when you're looking at the fact that you now are that listing agent, hypothetically, that said, okay, I'll work with you with this, uh, with this uh, conditional offer and see where we can go. But I promise you what's going to happen is now, the, the, of course, listing agent is not going to tell the buying agent that. But what's going to happen is, is the listing agent is going to make you pay extra for the privilege of having this home tied up. And the seller is going to do the same. The seller is going to want more money to be able to do that. And that's what we call as risk money. As you see right here, where we're talking about risk money. So the example that we're going to work with today, gang, is hypothetically, if you're going to buy a $500,000 house and you're going to sell your $300,000 house. So if you're going to buy that $500,000 house and you're going to write an offer, if you wrote an unconditional cash offer, you probably could negotiate to maybe what? four seventy-five. dollars for 70, 480, somewhere in there. So you get it down quite a bit lower than the $500,000 that what maybe the asking price is today. So what's going to happen with the offer as you put it in is the listing agent and the seller are going to hold firm on that $500,000 and they're not going to negotiate at all. So the example that I'm using today is hypothetically, you could have got it for 475, but now you're going to end up paying 500. So when you did that, you ended up paying $25,000 more than you would have if you would have done it the other way around. So that's called risk money. So we're going to lose right here. We're going to put $25,000. Now, the second side of that is we have to look over here at your home or your current home. When you're looking at your current home, how much money could you lose there? Well, here's what happens, gang. This morning when you got up, you were looking at your castle. You were looking at your home and you're happy with it. You really liked it. It's a nice place. Everything's good. But when you left your home and you went out and you found that other home, your home now is no longer a castle. Your home is now a noose around your neck because you got to get rid of it because you can't buy the new one until you sell the old one. So therefore, the new one, the old one is a problem for you. So instead of holding firm on the sale price of your house that you might get 300000 for, you're willing to look at offers and you're willing to negotiate because you know that if you put yourself to the sale of offer on the other one, you really only have 72 hours to get this done. So you got to get it done quick. So if you're going to do that, what do you do to the price of your existing house? You bring it down, right? Well, let's say that you only bring it down by a small amount. What if you only bring it down by, let's say, I don't know, 5%. If you bring it down by 5%, that's $15,000, yes? So, you know, 300,000 times 5% is $15,000. So now when we look at that and we add that up, $25,000 because you negotiated ahead with a conditional offer or a 72 hour clause on there. And then you lost $15,000 also on the sale of your house because you want to sell it quickly. So that turns out to be a $40,000 loss, gang, on the sale of your house. Now, a sale and buy of a home. Now, that's a lot of money to me, $40,000. I don't know about you. What do you think we should do, Mr. and Mrs. Seller? Should we maybe do this right instead of maybe do it wrong and then actually get the home that you're looking for and save you that $40,000? What do you think? Good idea? 
Now, how are you going to do that? Well, of course, what you're going to do, uh, gang, is we're going to go ahead and list that house aggressively. We're going to list their house at right, right at 300, if it's worth 300, or maybe 290, because it's worth that. And you'll get lots of action and you get it sold right away. And maybe you can still offer on that same house. <clears throat> but worst case scenario, that house is gone. Now, is it your responsibility to promise these people that you'll find another house just like the one that they liked? Yes. And is there another one out there? Most of the time, it's very easy to find another house. Why? Because you're not going to just wait for a home to get listed. You're going to do all the things that you can possibly do to find that home that matches the one you've uh, originally looked at and be able to get them their home sold, buy another one, maximize the money, and you look like a hero. Fair enough? That's called the buy-sell analysis, gang. And I promise you, if you can master how to deliver the buy-sell analysis and show your customers the right way to do it, not necessarily wrong, but in reverse as they were doing it, you are going to really, really shine in the eyes of your seller and your buyer. Thank you very much for giving me the time to be here today. I really appreciate